I see it. How do you think it's going to go today? Well, I think it's going to be quite a nice day. The uh, bit of blue sky. What about the boat? Oh, the boat's there. The boat's there. Are you very, very confident? Well, David Trimble is an unlikely revolutionary. Former Protestant firebrand, leader of the Ulster Unionists, Trimble is now arguing for reconciliation between Ulster's warring factions. No easy task in a province where peace has again and again founded on the rocks of political intolerance and religious bigotry. You're still banking on 70%. Oh, well, look, look. I'll, ne I'll never get there. You're only a Twitter. You're only a Twitter. That's what you are. A Twitter of all Twitters. That's what you are. You've sold us out the Dublin Rule. You should be ashamed of yourself. Upstairs, Jim, is it? I said, I said, I said when I came in there were there were four excited members of the general public and eighty excited journalists. <laughs> <laughs> David Trimble has only a month to convince the people of Northern Ireland that if they are to break the relentless cycle of violence, they must vote to back the historic Good Friday Peace Agreement in a countrywide referendum. Protestant will have to share power with Catholic. Terrorists will have to lay down their arms. Centuries old prejudices will have to be abandoned. And if he's to succeed, Trimble has to rise above the narrow sectarianism of his own past as a Protestant rabble rouser. First signs are encouraging. Trimble's Yes campaign enjoys an overwhelming poll lead. In the quiet of party headquarters, he prepares his first major speech. There, there are a number of obvious points to make. Uh, it's trying to work out the best order in which to do them. And always, always getting the right sort of note to conclude on. I'm very bad at perorations. My tendency is to, is to, you know, to explain and, uh, I was told that my address to the executive last Saturday, which lasted, it is claimed one hour 40 minutes, but one hour 20 is closer to the point, uh, was as boring as my lectures. No such problem for the Reverend Ian Paisley MP, Trimble's main opponent, the leader of the hardline Democratic Unionists. Paisley's personally responsible for the collapse of all previous attempts at change. Mr. Trimble, you can lie about it. You can cheat about it. You can enter into common cause with Ulster's ancient enemies. You can get the accolade of the godfather of all godfathers of terrorism, Jerry Adams, when he said, well done, David, and got his followers to clap, David Trimble. Mr. Trimble, you can have their claps. But there's one thing. At the end of the day, the ordinary Ulster Unionist knows as they read this agreement that this is the greatest betrayal that was ever foisted by any Unionist leader upon the Unionist people. This is not a Paisleyite rally. So how will you know if your speech has gone well? Uh, there'll be polite applause. And if it's caused badly, there will also be polite applause. <laughs> the bar of the opinion of Ulster people, you will be tried on the 22nd of May 
And I'm saying this tonight. I am confident that the vast majority of unionist people are now going to say no. Yes. Whether he's in the church, whether he's in an orange hall, whether he's at an open air rally, he has this ability to fire them up. David Trimble doesn't fire people up. He's hesitant, ponderous, um, not simple in his message, and as a result of that, people lose him. They lose him. What, you know, what do you think the game is for you at the moment? Seeing if I can do some good here. But the, um, doesn't want to overplay that aspect of it, but it is actually one of the main reasons why people do get involved in public life. Um, that's what I mean by not just sitting here to occupy a chair until it's retirement day. Ah. Trimble sets off to face the party faithful, the rank and file of the Ulster Unionists, driven by three armed bodyguards. It's neither a simple nor a safe task to convince even those sympathetic to his leadership to abandon beliefs that have sustained their communities for hundreds of years. I, sir, will never vote for a yes. I will never sit down with a Sinn Féin man. Today, tomorrow, or 30 years hence. Well, I'm... you've got a problem then. No, sir, I haven't got a no, problem. Let, let, let me tell you what the problem I think you have then is. We are at a very important point in our history. It's not a time for windy rhetoric. It's not a time for false prospects and false hopes. Anybody who thinks that in 1998 the Unionist people can impose their will on all the people of Northern Ireland and the British government and world opinion is deluded. Well, you know yourself, there is no power in this assembly. If we elect this 70 members, Unionist members, against 38 Nationalists and Alliance and other types, those 70 members will sit and twiddle their thumbs. If we have a veto, so have the other side of veto. We're not going to get simple majority rule. We will have to take Nationalists with us. But again, who thought we were going to do things otherwise? Outside, the police are finding it increasingly difficult to protect the hall. The news that Trimble's speaking sparks a near riot. I am answering and dealing with the points that have been put. That's what I'm doing. And I'm giving you the honest, unvarnished facts. It may not be comfortable, but these are the truths. Well, no, James. No, that is not true. I tell you, sir, that is not true. Sorry. <sighs> the meeting's over, but Trimble can't leave. The police judge his life is in danger. The protest is out of control. I reckon there's not just enough police to deal with them. It's not the flag that bothers me, but it's the flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> and then they decide to make a run for it. David Trimble's relatively new to the bear pit of Northern Ireland politics, an MP for eight years and Unionist Party leader for only three. The former law professor is an unlikely politician. So what's the current plan? What plan? <laughs> I'm about to go out and do the shopping so that we'll have some food. <laughs> yes, we hope to eat. <laughs> yes. Well, it sometimes is difficult getting to the opportunity to eat because it's difficult getting the time to go out to shop. We've had two occasions. 
in the last month, when we find ourselves only getting back here at six o'clock on Saturday without having had the chance to do any shopping. Not as a, not a, not a small inconvenience. <laughs> It'd be funny if it wasn't true. <laughs> And the cameras love little girls, so they do. But there we are, you know, from her back, and she'd turn round. <laughs> have, have, have a look at the camera. Isn't that an interesting thing? Mr. Trump will not be long leader of the there Unionist Party. The Unionist Party will sort him out very quick. When they see that the vote has gone against them, they're not going to hold on to a leader that's going to take them down into oblivion. Hello there. The Yes campaign is dogged by protest. Trimble's early poll lead starts to collapse. The road. Nothing, because I ain't betraying it. I hope you're going to put the no votes at the top of the poll there. Oh, now we have to put the rubbish. Oh. Have a nice day, folks. Uh, it is a bit of a circus, isn't oh, it? Oh, well, what's that? Eh? Oh, you forgot to bring your friend Jay Arms with you today. No, that's a clever, that's a pretty clever comment. It's ever come in, isn't it? Another blow for Trimble. Two weeks to the vote, and half his MPs defect to Paisley and the No campaign. We, the united pro-union people of Northern Ireland, declare our resolute and determined opposition to the Belfast Agreement. What message are you sending to Mr Trimble this evening? beginning of the end, as you see it, of David Trimble as the leader of the Ulster Unionist Party. That David Trimble's feeling this morning. The last he's day. feeling very sore. He's very angry, and he says, "I'm sad looking." I thought it was very glad looking. Going to have to be the camera the uh, Hiya. Hiya. People who say, you know, oh, Trimble, he's all washed up, there's going to be a massive no vote. It's all over for Trimble, he's going to have to stand down. Well, they may be true. Don't think so, actually, but it might be true. Yeah? Well, it'll not be the end of the world. Meaning? Well, there's a life after politics. And, I mean, if by some fluke there was a man. Look, anybody who goes into politics, has got to realise that they are, some t in, in political terms, they are always expendable. That's the whole point of being in politics. The point is to enable people out there to choose. Now, they can choose parties and policies, but that inevitably also means choosing people. And so anybody who goes into politics reali must realise that they're always liable. There, there's no security of tenure. There's no way that you can bank on the day. And you might be right. You might have the best possible motives about what you're doing, and be sh sure by any rational calculus it's the right thing, but you may encounter a sea change in public opinion, and bang, you're out. And then, in a campaign devoid of spectacle, the Yes campaign suddenly engineered the photo opportunity of the referendum. Over 60 camera crews in the hall, okay? So the image coming out of here tonight for Northern Ireland is going to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> Trimble's family and Bono. You too, Ireland's biggest band back the Yes campaign. Salvation for the Wagner-loving Trimble from the most unlikely quarter. And Paisley, caught unawares. I would like to introduce you to two men who are making history. We want them to join together with us. You two bring together on stage Trimble, and across the religious divide, John Hume, the hero of the Catholic civil rights movement. Their handshake, the defining image of the campaign. Thank you.
I'll not, uh, I'll not uh, say anything more on our Choose an Animal forum. You get to share it, leaves you darling. You don't care for it. I'm surprised that you and your media did not report that when Mr. Trimble joined hands with Bono, he was joining hands with a man that burned the Union Jack. Why has that been concealed from all the press? <laughs> right. <laughs> ah, now that's where I'm going to spend my holidays. I'm hiring a narrow boat. I'm going, going to go chug, chug, chug at two, three and a half miles per hour along the English canals. Isn't that great for a person who can't sit still? <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping off and running alongside the top half and getting it. Giving it a push. It is the eve of the poll. What are you thinking? I know I've done the right thing. Win, lose, or draw. I'm quite sure of that. I, it's not everybody's cup of tea and it's not ideal, but it is worthwhile. That's a different matter. And I knew if that was possible, I had to give people a chance. I've done that. And we've presented that chance to them as best we can. They'll decide whether to take it or not. But I've done, I've done my bit. There's one last twist in the campaign, the clash of the Protestant titans. David Trimble and Ian Paisley are to debate face to face on BBC television, the only time in the campaign. But at the last minute, Paisley is rumored to be pulling out, claiming the debate is rigged. Oh, sorry. sorry no so you're frightened of debating with Trimble or not? The, the only reply I make to that there, he's fighting of to, he's frightened of debating with me. He wouldn't debate with me in the forums. That's an elected body with a proper Absolutely. order. He wouldn't even debate with me in the House of Commons. Don't, don't forget to have the empty chair. <laughs> what empty chair? What could you be referring to? The chair for Ian. You never know, he might just turn up at the last minute. <laughs> no, that would be fun. And how do you feel? Uh, getting sleepy again. <laughs> Is that the effect of your own rhetoric? <laughs> <laughs> rhetoric? Rhetoric? Would I, would I indulge in rhetoric? And then I was proved absolutely right today when I lifted up the newsletter and they said they had a nace up a sleeve. I wasn't there to discuss a nace up Trimble's sleeve or up his trousers. I was there to discuss the agreement. That's great. All right. Oh, God. At the last minute, Paisley agrees to take on Trimble. The debate is on. Do you remember, Ian, what you did were saying in 1972? 1972, Ian was urging the government to abolish Stormont, and they did. And then what happened? One, what happened over the years? What happened? We had people marching up and down hills, waving bits of paper. We had third forces. We had Ulster resistance and its, its berries, and you dropped them pretty quick when some of them got into trouble. And no, in those right. 25 years, what has been achieved? Here is Mr. In the last, Trimble's paper. In the last two and a half the, years. destroy the union. In the last two and a half years, union, I have been giving the people 80, a chance. What about you promised them, represent, you promised them you were going to address listen, issues. Listen, okay. Listen, okay. And you yeah, were but, happy uh, enough to this represent this, this, this represent The this public will be confused by this plethora. The government of North. The government of Ireland. Dr. Paisley. Let's get on to the That's the basis of our argument. You mentioned no, it is not. Let's get on to the It is not. People look upon this as an act of treachery, and they're not going to wear it for Jerry Adams. This or is our opportunity for the future. Or this is the future. Dr. Paisley, of Mr. Trimble, this is the thank future. You of the thank you both very much indeed. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, yeah. hmm? Wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, no. Do what are we going? Sky? Going to Sky? Yes. Throughout the day, Trimble is caught in a media frenzy of interviews and sound bites. The next big hurdle for society. There's a barrier there just behind you. Thank you very much. The result is painfully slow to emerge. 
indications seem to be low 70s. Uh, it'd be delightful if we got high 70s, but at the moment we're on course for, for a victory here, and uh, I think it's Trimble's day. Make up, make up. Uh, make up, please. Make up. At last, the result filters up from the count. 70% have backed the agreement. It is Trimble's day. From yes, campaign, I see our thing, you're finished. <laughs> yeah, have a drink. We've heard that from day one. On We've heard that from day one. It's It'll worse. be a long time before he's finished. Mm. And then, amid the euphoria, a reminder that Trimble still has to confront darker, more intractable forces. The BBC usher Sinn Féin leader Gerry Adams onto the same platform as Trimble. They have never appeared in public together before. Trimble won't talk to Adams till the IRA lays down its guns. Had I known Adams was going to be there, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have let him sit there. Because while I know David's uncomfortable, I know David's uncomfortable. Both. Trimble cut short his interview. The Prime Minister has given personal pledges in trying to address his concerns. Yeah. 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 For now, he need not reply to any more questions. But one day answers will have to be found if the referendum result is not to be a hollow victory. 71%? Is that a mandate? Mr. Trimble, I think decommissioning now is the next big hurdle. The first threat to Trimble's hard-won peace, the marching season. This year, the government is determined there shall be no violence. They have established a parades commission that has the power to ban Protestant marches. That would have the capacity to, to turn this summer into complete turmoil and could destroy the, any prospect of political progress. Destroy is not too strong a word to use. Now, anybody who doesn't know that is a fool. On this issue, Trimble is no moderate. He made his name and won his party leadership, insisting on the right to march. Throughout the summer, Trimble's past would return to haunt him. Old allies become new enemies. Trimble can no longer afford to pander to the prejudices of his own community. The victor of the referendum is running for election as First Minister of Northern Ireland, leader of the new assembly set up under the Good Friday Agreement. He arrives on the ultra-loyalist Shankill Road in Protestant North Belfast. Just at the moment, the Parades Commission banned the local march. Living there, who have come along and said, "Look, we'll we'll canvas uh, Spring Martin uh -huh. Highfield." So, yeah. what sort of reaction are you getting? Good, good. fairly positive, fairly positive. We're very happy. However much he hates the decision, yeah, there's nothing for Trimble to do but grin and bear it. Uh, the UK yeah. unionists have something from Donegal yeah. Stanton, so. <laughs> Carry on, a traitor you are. Uh, he's a traitor, all right. He can run by Dr. Paisley one minute, next minute they stab him on the back, but he'll never win it. Now, only too aware that silence on the right to march is alienating his own people, Trimble retreats to party headquarters. Well, it could cause an awful lot of trouble or something. Not be anything new. What's, I mean, what sort of trouble could it cause? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Um, either way, whatever happens, there's going to be some difficulties in the area. You know? Trimble's worst nightmare is realised. The very march that won him the Unionist Party leadership is to be banned. Drum Cree. Drum Cree Church lies in the heart of his constituency. The Catholic Garbahi Road is the road where he insisted on the right to march. 
but this year the Parades Commission indicates the Protestants will not be allowed to march along it. And Trimble is powerless to do anything about it. The determination that has been issued today is the law of the land and must be obeyed. He's the one person who can destroy political progress in Northern Ireland. Everything, everything else we can cope with. The attacks from DUP, the behaviour of Sinn Féin, the IRA, we can cope with it all. The only thing that I can see that is likely to destroy the progress that we're making is Graham and his crowd. Drum Creek could cause major public disorder. And when I mean to when I say major, I mean really major. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Let the King hear us when we call. Amen. And may God bless his word to our hearts. To some, the right to march at Drum Creek has become the definition of the Protestant faith. They have no intention of letting anybody get in their way. That their, the Roman Catholic Church is completely behind all our troubles. These rotten, dirty, pedophiles and immoral men are no example of... I can't as a loyalist, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of boys here, can't recognise any nice Lister in Northern Ireland. They're all loyalist areas, but temporarily occupied by Republicans, and they're the enemies of this country. The one thing I'm not prepared to accept under any circumstances is a United Ireland, which is what David Trimble is heading us towards. Hello. I'm not too bad. Don't worry, I'm not gonna infect the baby with anything. See, you're all right, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna let the baby have any of my germs. Loyalty's torn, Trimble campaigns on. As the march approaches, he can only summon a compromise that will satisfy no one. The best way of managing, we can't solve the problem, the best way of managing the situation is for the men to walk down the road in a very disciplined and orderly way, and if people, if local residents want to protest, then let them have a protest, but again, let it have an organized, peaceful protest, so that each side feels that, you know, that they, they haven't surrendered their position and we get things over quickly and quietly. Trimble's compromise is rejected by the Catholics on the parade route, leaving him totally isolated. Garvahi Road residents marshaled by former IRA terrorist Brendan McKenna. David Trimble manipulated the situation at Drum Creek to such an extent that he was able to uh, gain the leadership of the Unionist Party. Now, he is now faced with the situation that can David Trimble, the, or the orange man's hero from 95, 96 and 97, now makes some sort of accommodation with his nationalist constituents. I think he's literally placed between the devil and the deep blue sea here. Trimble's a traitor. I think he's betrayed Ulster. I think he's sold out. And they probably think it needs an payment of the government as well, or under some sort of control. One wonders why David Trimble, three years ago, used these people to gain the leadership of the, of the Ulster Unionist Party. Election day, the climax of Trimble's bid to run Northern Ireland, and there are rumours even mainstream Protestants are deserting him. Would it be possible to have a quick word, Mr Trimble? Not until I have a chance to go in and have a look at things. OK. How do you feel, Mr Trimble? Excuse me, I think I've got one. It was a nerve-jangling and a long day for David Trimble, not only as the leader of the Ulster Unionist Party as a whole, but also on a personal level in his own constituency in Upper Ban. At last, Trimble wins. He's first minister, but he's only got a paper-thin majority. I want to say that this is a good day for Northern Ireland. A very good day for Northern Ireland because they thought they had us hamstrung and buried. 
and the media, all you folks here, were all guilty. You're telling Paisley as a has been, the DUP are burying, are going to bury us in a Sadducee's grave, and if you don't know what that is, that's a grave that can never be resurrected again from, and all that. And it has all come to nothing. And all over Ulster today, the DUP is topping the poll. And the sickest man of all is David Trimble. Today, the people of Northern Ireland wrote the obituary notice of Trimbleism. This is a good day. The sun is shining and all is well. And the rain will fall to water not the green grass, but the orange seeds that have been sowed today. Roll on the 12th of July! The climax of the marching season, and the Parades Commission confirms Drum Cree is to be banned. In another blow to the new First Minister's authority, the government order the army onto the parade route. They are determined that there should be no way through for the marches. I think you will find that David Trimble's petrified of what occurred here today. It leaves, it leaves his uh, position as leader of the Unionist Party untenable if this goes badly on Sunday he's finished. Uh, things are very tense, as you can obviously expect. David has been on to Downing Street this morning. We've been on to uh, intermediaries on the Gravaki Road in the Orange and so on. But it's not likely he will be putting his head in front of a camera today. <laughs> Finally, Trimble has to appear in public. Three days to the march, and he's about to be sworn in as First Minister. May I ask you a question? How do you feel on this historic day? Fed up with hearing the word historic. But it is an important day. Lots of important days. Lots of important days. At least the sun is shining. At Drum Cree, the Paras arrive as Trimble is sworn in as First Minister. With the government calling the shots, he's powerless to influence a massive troop buildup. Both sides are getting ready. Brendan McKenna is shown the weapons taken from Catholic residents at one checkpoint. I was driving three loyalist plaquettes. They would like something in a cure with them. You would carry a knife? I would carry a knife, at the very minimum. Well, that would be an offence. For, for my own protection, because quite, quite obviously over the last couple of days... I was serving. Quite obviously over the last couple of days, there has been inadequate protection provided for nationalists driving in and out of this area. Overnight, the army built a barricade across the parade route. His party have told Trimble he cannot march. not even go to Drum Cree this year and um, I mean we don't want to build tension here we don't want to exacerbate the situation the problem is that if I go to something like that the security disappears the people who drive me around will disappear leave me and I'll have to consider whether being then left and with no security at all what the level of threat is because that would be the situation then at 10 o'clock one summer Sunday 30,000 Protestants set out for Drum Creek Church Please present themselves at the barrier. An hour later, the marchers reach the army barricade, and there they dig in. What does this mean for Trimble? I mean, 
he's not here. It's beginning at the end, that's what it means for him, because the fact is he can't be here because he would not be received. And the second thing is that his talk about consensus and his talk about inter-community relations is now lying in tatters, because we, what we see here is a denial of civil rights, and what we see here is a people who are standing up for their rights. He plays no part in that at all. He has betrayed us, and he now is no part of this process that we're involved in. His fate is now sealed here today. I pray God that God will avert this problem because only divine intervention can keep this from an explosion that no one will stop. And there's no man will be able to stop it. It's only beginning. You've only seen the first round. And I want to tell you, the second round and the <coughs> third round will show you Mr. Trimble completely and totally, totally isolated. Right. If we're ready, our key message to the people of Northern Ireland at this very dangerous time is to keep calm and to keep the peace. We do not want to see violence in our streets. We do not want to see the two sides of our community embark on a collision course where there will only be losers. As Northern Ireland edges close to chaos, the new First Minister makes no public attempt to call the marchers to abandon Drum Cree. He stays imprisoned in his offices in fruitless attempts to appease all sides. I'm going to have to find Dining Street again. They should have phoned back by four now. The sort of situation we're facing at the moment could be very, very difficult, but there's no point uh, dwelling on the problems. We have to just wait and see what happens today. I mean, one of the things I've been saying to people over the course of the last week is to keep calm. What does that mean for loyalists? Well, for everybody, it means keeping calm. Uh, and I would have thought that keeping calm excludes shooting, bombing, and rioting. <laughs> What is the lesson for all this experience for the peace process, then? Well, there might not be one after this. Really? Mm -hmm. And for you, what does that... I mean, it's slightly in the lang language of cliche, but what emotions does that evoke? You worked for three years to try and get there to be something. Uh, what do you feel at the moment? Well, I would have a decent holiday, then. <laughs> David, well, come on. <laughs> well, there's, there's a life after politics. You might fool some of the people some of the times, but you'll not fool all of the people all of the times. And in his retirement, with a tear of regret falling on the page, and Mr. Trimble will need to learn that lesson. A bomb. 29 people killed one Saturday afternoon. The worst atrocity of the troubles. An IRA splinter group claim responsibility. Is this the end of the peace process? For once, even David Trimble can't see the future clearly. This last week, they're not thinking beyond the events of the week and, and the situation that they're trying to cope with and, and, and grieving and adjusting to it. Uh, and I think you'll now find, in the course of this coming week, people beginning to think more politically about it and we'll get a better fix on just where people are.
political honor. I've been here virtually every day this week. Yeah. So this 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 is going to be a lot easier than the trip visits earlier in the week. To some, Boma is a clear sign the IRA is never going to abandon the struggle. Trimble now insists that if the peace is to be saved, the IRA must match the public mood and lay down their arms. If the Shinners are going to make any sort of move, this is the best time they're going to get. If they do not move at this juncture, I can see opinion hardening quite significantly. Blair tells me that he told uh, Adams in July that he had no hope of getting into an administration in Northern Ireland without action on decommissioning and that he'd better move quick. That's what he said, you know, that's, this is on the basis of not a word of Pierce this, you know, uh, for at least several months, you know. I don't actually think that Jerry's got the bottle to do it. I don't think he's got the brains to do it or the bottle to do it. Jerry's not the sort of man to take risks. Never has done. Got himself out of frontline paramilitary activity as fast as he could. Um, his, his political moves are always done slowly and indirectly. Indirectly, he pushes other people up in front. And, uh, and when he does a thing, it's always done in a, cra in a Jesuitical manner, you know. Uh, no, I, I can't see Jerry having the guts to do it. The IRA make no reply to Trimble's plea. Under the shadow of Oma, the Unionists move into Stormont, home of power in Northern Ireland, and site of so many failed attempts at government. We have just moved down this morning to the ground floor offices. Uh, we're taking over the Secretary of State's old office and her accommodation. This here is the assembly chamber, which has to be ready for the 14th of September for the first sitting. Again, uh, temporary, temporary furnishings, but uh, the important thing is we're here, and uh, we're here to stay. Daffy, do you want this list of all the participants at the conference? As First Minister, Trimble won't have unfettered authority. Under the Good Friday Agreement, he has to share power. And crucially, he has to share power with a Catholic politician. Now, we have to work together. There is no other way of doing it. And whatever he may wish or desire, let me coin a phrase, I will not go away, you know. He somehow or another doesn't have the capacity to, to communicate with people, not on an academic basis or a political basis, but a, on a human basis. And I think uh, if he would develop that skill, it would be very, very helpful for him. And I think above all, uh, he has this uh, personal requirement to always be right. Now, nobody is ever always right. Trimble's problem isn't just one of communication, it's the intractable problems of the peace. The IRA has again refused to give up its guns. From our point of view, the real problem with the statement by the IRA today is that when asked by the interviewer whether they would say the war is over, they said no. When asked by the interviewer whether they were going to decommission weapons, they said no. Yet, it is their obligation under the agreement to decommission and, of course, it, they are supposed to be committed to peace. And if you're committed to peace, you can't be saying that the war's not over. And then, four days later, under intense political pressure, the IRA announce the war is over, though they're still not going to hand in any weapons. But it's enough for Trimble to agree to meet Adams at Stormont, the first time they've ever met in public, the first time any Unionist leader has ever met a Republican leader in all the years of the Troubles. I welcome Mr. Trimble's response. There's obviously a reluctance within unionism and some quarters and an outright hostility to implementing this uh, agreement. And I think Mr. Trimble will increasingly understand that he has to do his job.
assume this whole political experiment fails, there are two certainties in that. One, David Trimble is finished. The other is Jerry Adams is finished. And the irony is that the two people who, because of their positions, are actually preventing it moving forward are the two people with most to lose. Trimble's calculation is that this meeting will mark the beginning of the end for the IRA's armed struggle. I don't bet. I'm just simply gobbling the future of it. <laughs> uh, or my future of it, I suppose, to be more precise. Uh, no, I think actually the, 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 the likelihood is that it is going to happen. You see, especially, I didn't have this feeling before Oma, but I have this feeling post Oma. I do think it's going to happen. For all the progress of the year, there's been no breakthrough. What do you specifically say to Mr. Adams? Uh, the meeting in total lasted for about uh, one hour, 20 minutes, and I'm sorry, I don't have total recall. I'm sorry, I'm play it back to you. Did you shake hands Mr. Uh, No, I didn't shake hands with anybody. I haven't shaken hands with anybody at any of these meetings that we're having. Uh, so I'm treating everyone in an absolutely equal manner. So how do you welcome them? These people told us, though, Mr. Adams, that before going in there, they would be challenging you on the question of decommissioning. To find anywhere in the agreement where it says that decommissioning as a precondition, then that would be news to me. We negotiated the agreement. It wasn't a dummy run. It wasn't a rehearsal. It isn't a draft. It is the reality. On all the fronts in terms of the institutions and the prisoner releases, progress is occurring. And there's one matter in respect of which no progress is being made. And Mr. Adams has a personal responsibility with regard to that. So I did point that out to him in the course of today's meeting. You know, that it's simply unreasonable to expect a situation where every front is moving bar one. There's been no change since. Northern Ireland is once again locked in the stalemate that's plagued it for 30 years. Trimble is insisting the IRA give up their struggle. The IRA are refusing to hand over a single weapon. We have a remarkable opportunity. It would be absolutely tragic if anyone let it fade away. Any progress, Mr. Trimble? I've reached the point of light stopping today. Yes. Stop David Trimble has tried to change Ulster's old certainties. But it's not clear he or anyone else can escape the legacy of centuries of conflict. I have done what I can do. And it's also important to be aware of, you know, what is possible, what is not possible. I won't have anything to reproach myself with, that's certain. Mind you, I will have done and have done a tremendous amount in terms of, of what can be done. Uh, but there are not many more things that can be done, actually, on this front, by me. Lots of things for other people to do. back uh, over the course of the last uh, 18 months, maybe three years span, as I'll say, I've, I've been of some service. When we started the year, I mean, genuinely, almost the yeah. first thing you said to me was, I'm here to do some good. I have tried. And I've done something. The question is whether it's enough and that's not entirely in my control.